from June 30, 1764 to June 19, 1767, between 82 and 124 people were victims of the Beast of Gavordan. These attacks took place in a vast territory which today covers the French departments of Lazire, Cantal and Haute-Loire. A wolf, a hybrid, or a dog trained to attack. Or maybe an exotic animal, a werewolf or even a serial killer, opinions differ while the mystery remains unsolved. The Beast of Gavordan was no fantasy nor a folklore tale. Church records kept in the archives of the cities of Mend as well as letters exchanged between the hunters, and the intendants of Oven are here to confirm it. Hundreds of people have been killed and sometimes devoured whereas some people have been rescued, while others have been hurt more or less severely. Documents of the time confirm that only canids, no other type of animal, were killed in Gavordan. It is an undeniable truth. This fact is not very surprising if we take into account the many documents about the history of France who show that for centuries, canids attacked humans on a cyclical basis. Especially during wars, major epidemics, and harsh winters. Bargist is a monstrous black dog from English folklore who is known for his huge fangs and claws, especially prominent in Yorkshire. The demon was feared as a dark omen with stories being told of it wandering into the city of York where it would prey on lone travelers. As well as the common black dog guys the Bargist was said to be a shapeshifter, and as such the name can be used to describe other supernatural beings such as ghosts or goblins. Many of the Bargist's forms are frightening to humans, further empathizing its status as an ill omen. The characteristic of cynocephaly, or cynocephalus, having the head of a canid, typically that of a dog or jackal, is a widely attested mythical phenomenon existing in many different forms and contexts. The literal meaning of cynocephaly is dog-headed, however, that this refers to a human body with a dog head is implied. Such cynocephalics are known in mythology and legend from many parts of the world. Cynocephaly is generally distinguished from lycanthropy and dogs that can talk. Since there do not seem to be sightings of these creatures today, most cryptozoologists ignore them. To the few who do pay attention to them, the cynocephali are viewed as either just one more kind of hairy humanoid or as a cryptid canine of some sort. In Scottish folklore, boonies are tiny, benevolent fairies. They appear to humans as small dwarfs with coal-black eyes. They wear suits colored with various earth tone colors, they have pointed ears, big eyes, and long fingers. They often explore a village finding homes of good, honest, and humble people. Once they find a good person's house, they set about, cleaning it, organizing it, and even adding new things. Boonies despise liars, murderers, crooks, or any other immoral person, and will actively prank them, steal things from, or just mess up the person's house. Sometimes, a boonie will like a particular house, and will decide to stay there. They will probably stay in the attic, cellar, or woodshed, they don't like to be seen by humans. In Scottish folklore, um fear lieth more, Scottish Gaelic for big grey man, is the name for a presence or creature which is said to haunt the summit and passes of Ben Macdhu, the highest peak of the Cairngorms. Most often, the creature remains unseen in the fog of the mountain, with encounters limited to the sound of crunching gravel as it walks behind climbers and a general feeling of unease around the mountain. Tangible evidence of its existence is limited to a few photographs of unusual footprints, so the majority relies on the credibility of eyewitness encounters. In 1925, a climber by the name of Professor J. Normal Collie reported hearing the grey man. He said that for every two or three steps he took, he heard one loud crunch, all the while he was speed walking at a reasonable pace, but the footsteps were coming closer and closer at last he couldn't bear it anymore, and sprinted away. Illusions, hallucinations or misinterpretation of natural stimulus brought on by exhaustion or isolation have been proposed by psychologists. Infrasound, which can be generated by wind, can cause feelings of uneasiness and anxiety and is possibly connected to paranormal sightings. An optical illusion known as the Brocken Spectre is a plausible explanation for some visual elements of the Big Grey Man legend. The Drekovac was originally thought to have come from the souls of sinful men, or from children who died unbaptized. It was popularly believed to be visible only at night, especially during the twelve days of Christmas and in early spring, when other demons and mythical creatures were believed to be more active. 
when assuming the form of a child, it predicts someone's death, while in its animal form, it predicts cattle disease. The Drekovac is believed to avoid dogs and bright light. Also, it is believed that if the shadow of Drekovac falls upon some person then that person will turn sick and die. Bukovac is another mythical creature in Slavic mythology. Belief in it existed in Srijem and also some parts of Serbia. Bukovac was sometimes imagined as a six-legged monster with gnarled horns. It lives in lakes and pools, coming out of the water during the night to make a loud, jump onto people and animals, and strangle them. Sumski Dekal, meaning, forest girls, are wild women of Croatia that were observed prior to World War I. They are covered with reddish or black hair, except for the face, square elf-like head and long strong arms. They are described to be a little shorter than humans even though they are much stronger with longer arms and legs. Their sightings stopped after the end of the Great War. If they really existed, the whole species could be accidentally wiped out by the war. Yale is a creature from European mythology, it has the body and head of a goat, tail and tusks of a boar, and the feet of a unicorn. It has horns on its head that can rotate in any direction, the Yale is horse-sized and has multicolored spots on its hide. Its name means, Mountain Goat. The Yale was first written about by Pliny the Elder in Book 8 of his Natural History. The creature passed into medieval bestiaries and heraldry, where it represents proud defense. Just as most myths seek to explain the natural world, so do the descriptions of its creatures. It is believed that the creature that Pliny the Elder described in his book as the Yale could have been the result of catching a glimpse of modern-day animals. Through his journey he notes the sighting of this creature while on the sub-Saharan African plains. Animals we know to be the antelope inhabit this area and loosely match the description of our dear Yale. Vatnijd is the most poisonous fish in Iceland it lives in the dark lakes, and hates lights, it is said that, it dies when in contact with light. The most common descriptions describe it as yellow flounder-like fish. Some describe Vatnijd being more like a tiny monkfish-like creature. Fishing for a Vatnijd is very hard, first you need to bait it with a golden ring then you also need to wear gloves made out of human skin. If you catch one you need to be careful, because it's so poisonous it can melt rocks, Skelger Scrimsley, meaning, shell monster, is a bear-like hippo-sized animal with blue scales similar to those of a pangolin. It is often described as being black and having seaweed and shell on it. It has long claws which it uses to hold onto rocks at the bottom of the sea when it gets stormy. In the 18th, 19th and first half of the 20th century, many stories of this creature were told. Now almost none are told. Skelger scrimsless live in the sea and haul themselves onto shore in the dark moonless nights of the northern winter. Often, they can be seen before or after spells of bad weather and storms. They are attracted to light and will leave deep gouges in farmhouse doors. Suffice to say that anyone who encounters one of these surly brutes will be in for a bad time. For decades there have been sightings of a creature in Huntingdon County, Pennsylvania's, in the Raystown Lake. Old photos show a large shadowy figure just below the surface. Boaters describe sudden water turbulence and strange appearances of a large water creature, which locals have dubbed Raystown Ray. Like many other lake monsters, Ray is often claimed to have a large, slightly humped body and a long neck which emerges from the water, leading to speculation that it could be a surviving plesiosaur-like species. However, the popular depiction of plesiosaur necks arching out of the water in a graceful S-curve has been debunked by modern research, and they are now thought to have been physically incapable of lifting their heads out of the water in the stereotypical Nessie pose. The Murfreesboro mud monster was first seen around midnight on June 25, 1973. Randy Needham and Judy Johnson, two Murfreesboro residents, were sitting in a parked car near the Big Muddy River when they heard a loud shriek coming from the woods. 
The next thing they knew, a tall, pale creature with fur caked in mud lumbered towards their car. The two left the scene, but reported the incident to the local police. This was, but the first of many unexplained sightings in the weeks to come. While sitting on their front porch around 10 the night of June 26, Kreef and Ray saw the creature not 15 feet away. They described it as 2, 5 meters tall and approximately 150 kilograms, with pale white fur, and smelling, foul, like river slime. Footprints were found at the scenes of the encounters, along with a mysterious black sludge. Although the search did not locate the creature, local law enforcement had no doubts that the residents did see something. A sighting at a traveling carnival 10 days later was the last reported sighting of the Murfreesboro mud monster for many years. Just as mysteriously as it had appeared, the creature was gone. The Cardiff giant was one of the most famous archaeological hoaxes in American history. It was three meters purported, petrified man, uncovered on October 16, 1869 by workers digging a well behind the barn of William Newell in Cardiff, New York. He covered the giant with a tent and it soon became an attraction site. However, it was realized that it was just a hoax created by New York tobacconist named George Hull. Being an atheist, Hull decided to create the giant after an argument with a fundamentalist minister named Mr. Turk about a passage in Genesis that stated that there were giants who once lived on Earth. The idea of a petrified man did not originate with Hull, however. In 1858 the newspaper Alta California had published a bogus letter claiming that a prospector had been petrified, when he drank a liquid within a geode. Some other newspapers also had published stories of supposedly petrified people. During days of the Old West, when cowboys gathered by the campfires singing at night, jackanapes could often be heard mimicking their voices. It is said that a jackalope may be caught by putting a flask of whiskey out at night. The jackalope will drink its fill of whiskey and its intoxication will make it easier to hunt. In some parts of the United States, it is said that jackalope meat has a taste similar to lobster. However, legend has it that they are dangerous if approached. It has also been said that jackanapes will only breed during electrical storms including hail, explaining its rarity. It is possible that the tales of jackalopes were inspired by sightings of rabbits infected with the Shope papilloma virus, which causes the growth of horn and antler-like tumors in various places on the rabbit's head and body. This can occur in cartontail rabbits under natural conditions and in domestic rabbits under experimental conditions. Whether or not the jackalope exists and roamed is up for debate, but the stories of the jackalope will go on and with it also carry on the legacy of the Old West, a time of when legends ran wild. Two-toed Tom was a large alligator with glowing red eyes. It terrorized local areas and was responsible for fatally attacking livestock and even people. It was given the nickname Two-toed Tom because all but two toes were lost to a steel trap. The story of Two-toed Tom began to circulate during the 1920s along the Florida-Alabama line. While visiting the area, locals told Carl Karmer about the monstrous alligator. A hefty bounty was supposedly offered for Two-toed Tom with hunters scouring the swamp often shooting the alligator but were unable to kill it. It was also able to mostly avoid steel traps laid in the area. Despite the use of guns and dynamite, locals could never kill it and would go on to wreak havoc for 20 years. After years out of the limelight, reports came flooding in once again. Several hunts were organized to find the alligator but without much success. Two-toed Tom is now said to still lurk around the swamps of northwest Florida and southeast Alabama. A subtropical bird with pink plumage and a distinctive bill has been recorded in Minnesota for the first time, causing ornithology enthusiasts to flock to a Bloomington Wildlife Preserve for a chance to see it in person. The wayward bird, known as a roseate spoonbill, was spotted recently in Washington County, according to the Minnesota Ornithologists' Union. In Canadian folklore, the Igopago is a mythical creature said to dwell in Lake Simcoe, Ontario. Descriptions of the Igopago vary. Writer George Eberhardt describes the cryptid as a grey seal-like animal, foot to 18 meters long, with a dog or horse-like face, prominent eyes, gaping mouth, dorsal fins, and a fish-like tail, and most alleged sightings describe similar-looking creatures. 
some writers have speculated based on this appearance that the sightings were actually of pinnets. Agopago is another Canadian lake monster said to inhabit Okanagan Lake in British Columbia. Some scholars have charted the entity's development from First Nations folklore and widespread water monster folklore motifs. The Agopago now plays a role in the commercial symbolism and media representation of the region. According to Radford, the Agopago is more closely tied to native myths than is any other lake monster. The black demon shark is an enormous black shark whose territory is said to be just off the coast of Mexico's Baja California Peninsula. In recent years, numerous sightings have been reported, primarily from local fishermen. The black demon is said to be between 14 meters long and weighing anywhere between 25 and 5,000 kilograms. It is said to resemble a great white shark but with very dark coloration and a large tail. Some say it could be the megalodon or a new species of shark, or perhaps an unusually large great white. Many expeditions were launched to locate the creature, even on Monster Quest in the chapter Mega Jaws. Nothing became of the investigation. Sadly, sightings are rare. Because of this, not much is known about it. The White River Monster is an aquatic cryptid known from the White River in Newport, Arkansas. The first recorded sightings of Whitey are from 1915, but the creature has allegedly been seen since the American Civil War. On July 1, 1915, a plantation owner spotted Whitey, stating that it had gray skin and was as wide as a car and three cars long. According to cryptozoologist Roy McCow, the creature is nothing more than an elephant seal that entered the White River via the Mississippi River. Another possibility is that Whitey is simply a large unidentified fish. An unlikely possibility could be that it's a presumed to be extinct Zephactinus, somehow able to survive in the freshwater of the White River, rather than the salt water of the ocean where it used to roam. The Cactus Cat is a mythical creature and fearsome critter that has been reported in the American Southwest. It's described as a bobcat-like animal with thorn-like fur, sharp bones protruding from its front legs and a branched tail. Cowboys and pioneers of the 19th century made up tales these strange beasts coming out at night, slashing open cacti exposing the sap. On later nights, the creature was said to drink the fermented juice. This caused the cats to enter an intoxicated state, stumbling around and rarely attacking travelers. Attacks by these strange varmints, though considered rare, did happen from time to time, with many frontiersmen waking up to find welts on their body from the cat's barbed tail. Despite these attacks, the cactus cat was not considered an aggressive creature. The story of the cactus cat is probably fueled by numerous cases of misidentification, most likely being a bobcat, mountain lion, or porcupine. The cat's whale may have also been that of a puma. It is also likely that the affable cactus cat was never believed to exist and, like most fearsome critters, was a product of a few bored woodsmen on a warm desert night. Sheep Squatch, also known as the White Thing, is a woolly-haired cryptid reported across numerous counties in West Virginia, predominantly within the southwestern region of the state. The counties with the most sightings are Boone, Kanaha, Putnam and Mason with a surge in sightings taking place in Boone County during the mid-1990s. It is described as being a quadruped about the size of a bear, with entirely white wool-like fur. It has a long and pointed head, similar to a dog, but with long, saber-like teeth and a single pint set of horns not dissimilar from those found on a young goat. Its forelimbs end in paw-like hands, similar to those of a raccoon but larger, while its tail is long and hairless like that of an opossum. It is reputed to smell like sulfur, which has been attributed through folklore to the beast being born within the TNT area in Mason County like one of the Mothman theories, though this is not likely and instead may be a musk scent gland similar to those found in many species in the order Carnivora, such as weasels and skunks. Mantis Man is a roughly 2 meters tall bug-like creature that has been reported in Hackettstone, New Jersey, near the Musconetcong River. This cryptid mostly resembles a praying mantis. The odd thing about the two sightings that were present is the fact that both men were out fishing and saw it near a body of water. 
praying mantis don't usually spend their times in water, but with its huge size, it can touch the bottom of the river without its whole body drifting away through the current. In all of the reports, the mantis man doesn't harm anyone, it's likely afraid of the people who encounter it because it seems to always run away when they get close to it. People claim that the mantis man may have been an experiment gone wrong, and someone who couldn't control it just set it free near a river. It could have been a mutation in a breeding situation, unlike it being short it would have been massive. The reason why most people think it's a giant mantis instead of being something else, is because it looks and does things like a mantis, camouflage, spreading its wings. At 7 in the evening, on September 12, 1952, two brothers, Edward and Fred May, and their friend Tommy Heyer, said that they saw a bright object cross the sky and land on the property of local farmer Bailey Fisher. The boys went to the home of Kathleen May, where they told their story. May, accompanied by the three boys went to the Fisher farm in an effort to locate whatever it was that the boys had said they had seen. The group reached the top of a hill, where Nunley said they saw a pulsing red light. One said he aimed a flashlight in that direction and momentarily saw a tall, man-like figure with a round, red face surrounded by a pointed, hood-like shape. The group said they had smelled a pungent mist and some later said they were nauseated. The local sheriff and a deputy had been investigating reports of a crashed aircraft in the area. They searched the site of the reported monster but saw, heard and smelled nothing. Some claimed to have discovered skid marks in the field and an odd, gummy deposit, which were subsequently attributed by UFO enthusiast groups as evidence of a saucer landing. After investigating the case in 2000, Joe Nickel of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry concluded that the bright light in the sky reported by the witnesses on September 12 was most likely a meteor, that the pulsating red light was likely an aircraft navigation or hazard beacon, and that the creature described by witnesses closely resembled an owl. Nickel suggested that witnesses' perceptions were distorted by their heightened state of anxiety. The Batsquatch is a flying cryptid that was allegedly seen near Mount St. Helens in the 80s. This creature was said to have yellow eyes, a dog-like muzzle, blue fur, sharp teeth, bird-like feet and leathery bat-like wings that span up to 1, 5 meters. In addition, it is said to be over 2 meters tall and has the ability to affect car engines. In April 1994, Brian Canfield was driving in Washington's Pierce County when his truck suddenly died. Canfield said a large creature landed in front of him. He said it was human-like, with bat-like wings and also sported a coat of blue fur. Ever since then it has not been seen and skeptics dismiss it as a hoax. In Ohio folklore, the Loveland frog is a legendary humanoid frog described as standing roughly 1-2 meters tall, allegedly spotted in Loveland, Ohio. In 1972, the Loveland frog legend gained renewed attention when a Loveland police officer reported to a colleague that he had seen an animal, consistent with descriptions of the frogman. After a reported sighting in 2016, the second officer called a news station to report that he had shot and killed the same creature some weeks after the 1972 incident, and had identified it as a large iguana that was missing its tail. According to various legends, the creature was first sighted by a businessman or a traveling salesman driving along an unnamed road late at night in 1955, with some versions of the story specifying the month of May. In one story, the driver was heading out of the Branch Hill neighborhood when he spotted three figures stood erect on their hind legs along the side of the road, with leathery skin and frog faces. The Fresno Nightcrawler, also known as the Fresno Alien, is a cryptid that has made two appearances so far, one in Fresno, California and the other in Yosemite National Park, also in California. In both sightings, it's only seen in video footage. However, a man in Poland has also claimed to have seen the creature. They appear to be relatively short creatures with most of their height being made up of their legs as they possess an extremely small upper body. It is hard to find details in the upper body of the cryptid due to the poor quality of the footage. It is an extremely thin, white humanoid with no discernible arms. The rockle is an eel with iron-hard scales and razor-sharp fins. It is 60 centimeters in length and lives in stagnant ponds, polluted waters, and occasionally rivers. 
It secretes a corrosive poison that it can utilize to burrow through the earth. They lie in wait for someone to step into the waters in which they live, then coil around their legs. According to folklore, there was once a wizard who gave life to a dead half-rotten eel, which became an evil and toxic being. The resurrected eel was transformed into the first beast of its kind, and its descendants went on to live in polluted waters. The Zanzibar leopard is an African leopard population on Unguja Island in the Zanzibar archipelago, Tanzania, that is considered extirpated due to persecution by local hunters and loss of habitat. It was the island's largest terrestrial carnivore and apex predator. Increasing conflict between people and leopards in the 20th century led to the demonization of the Zanzibar leopard, and determined attempts to exterminate it. Efforts to develop a leopard conservation program in the mid-1990s were shelved when wildlife researchers concluded that there was little prospect for the population's long-term survival. The Kikian or sole cannibal is one of the most terrifying and at the same time one of the least seen and understood of all the forest creatures. Its very name can conjure a look of horror. It is described as resembling a large owl, especially its head. It has a huge beak and raking talons on its arms and feet. In many respects it is a mixture of bird and human. The Bambara people say it has a huge pair of feathered wings which grow from its back. The shoulder joint of which is tipped with a sharp spur, a deadly weapon if its talons fail. The most terrifying feature is the presence of razor-sharp talons, much like those of a large owl, at the end of well-muscled legs. The smell of the kikiyan is said to resemble that of a dead snake that has lain in the sun too long it the denizen of the darkest forest. It rarely ventures from the gloom and despite its ferocious appearance, it contents itself with ambushing travelers who are desperately trying to get home before darkness falls. The Kikiyan is usually heard before it is seen and those who see it and live usually die of some lingering illness, if not from shock at the time. It is a deadly adversary, being capable of outrunning a man or even swooping down on its prey. According to legend, the devouring gourd of Uzambra was discovered by a group of little boys at play. Look at how big that gourd is getting, said one of the boys. To their surprise, the gourd responded. If you pluck me, I'll pluck you. It said. The boys ran home and told their mother, who refused to believe them. As the gourd was not plucked, it continued to grow. Eventually, it became the size of a house, uprooted itself, and went about swallowing everyone in the village. Only a pregnant woman had survived the gourd's rampage. Mamlambo is a cryptid that appears in South African and Zulu folklore, known to natives as the Brainsucker. This quasi-reptilian monstrosity terrorized the villages around the Mzintlava River in South Africa, and was notorious for dragging its victims into its murky depths, where it would devour their faces in order to consume their brains. Mamlambo sightings have occurred for a long time, but local police state that the monster's purported victims were actually only drowning casualties, resulting from the swelling of the Mzintlava River during the heavy rains of the Lesotho wet season. Captain Zuko of the Mount Aleph police credited crabs for the disfiguring injuries discovered on most victims' corpses. I have seen some of the bodies of the so-called monster's victims. They had all been in the water for some time and, as is often the case, river crabs had eaten away the soft parts of the faces and throats. In one case, the crabs were still clinging to the body when it was brought in. As far as we are concerned, there were cases of drowning, plain and simple. It is usually described as an immense fish-like creature with a long tapering neck, yellowish-brown pigmentation and a body which has been compared to a donkey with flippers. The Lao's most intriguing attribute would have to be the series of bristling, tentacle-like appendages, which allegedly protrude from the animal's muzzle and aid it in snaring its prey. In the late 1800s a Lao was reportedly seen near War, Sudan, but the creature's first brush with international acclaim came in 1914 when a group of Shilak aborigines reportedly killed a specimen of this creature in the swamps of Adda in order to use its bones to create protective amulets. Sadly, this unique beast's corpse was never recovered by any legitimate scientific body.
One day in 1932, the experienced Swedish hunter, John Johnson wanted to hunt a huge elephant, so he and his servant left their camp in Cape Town. They crossed a swamp until finally reaching the savannah, in the Kasai Valley, which seemed desolate, as there were no animals anywhere. There was something in the underbrush stalking the elephants. The servant dropped into the undergrowth, while, Johnson paralyzed, changed aim, and decided to shoot this strange creature. He shot the creature three times, and only one shot hit it, hitting it in the back. Johnson got his servant up from the ground, and decided to go back to his camp in Cape Town, but first, they had to cross the swamp. Johnson looked everywhere, until they saw 22 meters away the same creature that they saw in the savannah, tearing the hump of a rhinoceros, and that with one bite, tore one of the rhinoceros' legs off. He immediately thought of shooting the creature, but remembered terrified that the servant had taken his shotgun. But he still had his camera, so he took a photo of the creature, which upon hearing the click, sank quickly into the lake, while the rhinoceros' body floated in a pool of blood. The Ndumamanine is a cryptid supposedly living in Central Africa, described as a huge, serpentine lizard. It could be related to Mokel Mbembe as they both come from the same background and both resemble prehistoric animals. It is amphibious and moves rapidly through swamps and eats birds and monkeys. It is believed by some people to be a living dinosaur, most likely a spinosaurid, a genus of rather gigantic crocodile-like theropods that dwelled on riversides, in rainforest, coastal and delta habitats, that hunted any prey item available whether terrestrial or aquatic. If Ndumamanine is a giant member of the Spinosaur family this would be an amazing discovery. Ndumamanine is also described to be quite similar to the early ancestors of mammals, the synapsids, predatory ones such as Dimetrodon. It has also been said that it may be a larger member of the Varanidae family, the monitor lizards. Popa Bawa, also Popo Bawa, is the name of an evil spirit, which is believed by residents of Zanzibar to have first appeared on the Tanzanian island of Pemba. In 1995, it was the focus of a major outbreak of mass hysteria or panic which spread from Pemba to Unguja, the main island of the Zanzibar archipelago. Popa Bawa is a shapeshifter and described as taking different forms, not just that of a bat as its name implies. It typically visits homesteads at night, but can also be seen in the daytime. It is sometimes associated with the presence of a sulfurous odor, but this is not always the case. Victims are often urged to tell others that they have been assaulted, and are threatened with repeat visits by Popabawa if they do not. During panics many people try to guard against attack by spending the night awake outside of their houses, often huddled around an open fire with other family members and neighbors. A popular origin story of Popabawa proposes that in the 1970s an angry sheikh released a jinn to take vengeance on his neighbors. The sheikh lost control of the jinn, who took to demonic ways. It has been argued that because of Zanzibar's past as an Arab-run slave market, the story of Popabawa is an articulated social memory of the horrors of slavery. In May 2001, Reports began to circulate in the Indian capital New Delhi around a strange monkey-like creature that was appearing at night, and attacking people. Eyewitness accounts were often inconsistent, but tended to describe the creature as about 120 centimeters tall, covered in thick black hair, with a metal helmet, metal claws, glowing red eyes and three buttons on its chest. Some reports also claim that the monkey man wore roller skates. Over 350 sightings of the Kala Bunda were reported, as well as around 60 resulting injuries. Two people even died when they leapt from the tops of buildings or fell down stairwells in a panic caused by what they thought was the attacker. At one point, exasperated police even issued artists' impression drawings in an attempt to catch the creature. In Indonesian folklore, the Orang Pendek is the most common name given to a creature said to inhabit remote, mountainous forests on the islands of Sumatra and Borneo. The creature has allegedly been seen and documented for at least 100 years by forest tribes, local villagers, Dutch colonists, and Western scientists. Consensus among witnesses is that the entity is a ground-dwelling, bipedal primate covered in short fur, standing between 80 and 150 centimeters tall. 
many theories and suggested explanations revolve around the myth, including misidentification of an orangutan, a hominid or hobbit-like creature, or an undiscovered ape. With Sumatra being so densely populated with primates, the possibility that an upright gibbon was mistaken for an orang pendek is a very good one, although the gibbon simian gait would most likely throw off a human-like appearance. The manananggal is described as scary, often hideous, usually depicted as female, and always capable of severing its upper torso and sprouting huge bat-like wings to fly into the night in search of its victims. The word manananggal comes from the Tagalog word tangal, which means, to separate. The manananggal is said to favor preying on sleeping, pregnant women, using an elongated proboscis-like tongue to suck the hearts of fetuses, or the blood of someone who is sleeping. It also haunts newlyweds or couples in love. Due to being left at the altar, grooms-to-be are one of its main targets. The severed lower torso is left standing, and is the more vulnerable of the two halves. Sprinkling salt, smearing crushed garlic or ash on top of the standing torso is fatal to the creature. The upper torso then would not be able to rejoin itself and would perish by sunrise. Hibigan is a Japanese version of North America's Bigfoot. Said to live on Mount Hiba of the Hiroshima Prefecture, not much is known about the Hibigan, but some say that it is a quiet beast that is said to run from four armed residents then hunt them. Like all hominids they have a unique stench that is said to smell like decomposing flesh. In many respects, the Hibigan is more ape-like than the Sasquatch as well. It is often described as looking like a gorilla or giant monkey, and although it is most often seen moving bipedally, many reports tell of the creature moving about on all fours quite easily. Some eyewitnesses even claim the animal was hopping along, like a monkey. Other notable features are the Hibigan's apparent lack of fear of people and the absence of any sort of vocalizations in the reports. The Sharuf is an evil humanoid creature made of rock crystals and magma. It is said that Sharuf inhabit the magma pools found deep within volcanoes and are the source of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. They are also said to be the source of magicians' ardent stones that cause damage in volcanic regions. The only way to abate the Sharuf's appetite for destruction was to satiate the beast's taste for human flesh, by throwing a sacrificial victim into the bowels of its volcanic home. Much like the European dragon, the Sharuf's preferred delicacy came in the form of virginal maidens. The mythological origins of this beast may have originated to explain anomalies of geological events such as volcanic eruptions. The crocodile frog is a three meters long animal resembling a crocodile frog hybrid. It has the head like a crocodile atop a slimy amphibian body. It has no tail but possess strong and relatively long hind legs. The crocodile frog was known about by native villages in the area. Czech biologist, traveler and writer Yaroslav Mare had learnt about this creature from Silux tribe on an expedition in Borneo, during 1976 and 1985. He saw the creature eating wild pigs, he observed the creature for some time before it came towards him. It may have been a crocodile born without its tail. By some miracle, a tailless crocodile may have overcome this challenge and specialized in hunting land animals rather than fish. The Rao was encountered by Charles Miller and his wife Leona during a honeymoon in the West New Guinean jungle. They found a Rao in a swampy river delta between two arid plateaus. The sight of it was enough to paralyze Miller with fear, but not long enough to prevent him from filming. The rose head rose from the reeds on the end of a long neck, and its tail lashed as it called out. It reared several times, glancing in the direction of the whirring camera, before slithering away and disappearing behind a stand of dwarf eucalyptus. The story of this beast is fishy, and likely a hoax to get attention and fame for the couple, but there is a extremely little chance that the rogue creature is living dinosaur who roams the unexplored plateaus of western New Guinea. A shachihoko is a sea monster in Japanese folklore with the head of a tiger and the body of a carp covered entirely in black or grey scales. According to the tale, shachihoko lives in the cold northern ocean. Its broad fin and tails always point up toward heaven, and its dorsal fins have numerous sharp spikes. It can swallow a massive amount of water and hold it in its belly, as well as summon clouds and control the rain. Although believed to come from the sea, they are often constructed high on the roof standing upside down. 
since most ancient architecture is made of wood, they are often under the threat of fire. Shachihoko, believed to have the ability to store water and control the rain, are often constructed in a male and female pair at each end of the roof ridge as protector spirits of the castles. Although the exact technique is unknown, it is said that its grotesque appearance and particularly the spouting hole might send out water to quench fire. The Xiao bird said can be found on China's Bridge Channel Mountain and remote nearby forests. It is a bird with four wings and a tail similar to dogs. In mythological stories Xiao is described as having only one eye on its forehead. It's said that eating the creature cures abdominal pain and diarrhea. There are no reported sightings of this raucous bird nowadays, or at least no reported sightings to media, internet. There is a chance that Xiao bird is undiscovered species of bird, an old made-up myth or a long-gone dinosaur called Microraptor who lived in China and had four wings and a long fluffy tail. Ainu reverence of this monster has permeated into Shinto, which has incorporated Akurokamui as a minor kami. Self-purification practices for Akurokamui are often strictly followed. While it is often presented as a benevolent kami with powers to heal and bestow knowledge, it is fickle and has the propensity to do harm. Its nature as an octopus means that it is persistent and it is near impossible to escape its grasp without permission. Akurokamui is characteristically described with the ability to self-amputate, like several octopuses' species, and regenerate limbs. This characteristic manifests in the belief in Shinto that it has healing powers. Consequently, it is believed among followers that giving offerings to Akurokamui will heal ailments of the body, in particular, disfigurements and broken limbs. The Zuiomaru carcass, was the decomposed remains of a sea creature caught by the Japanese fishing trawler Zuiomaru off the east coast of New Zealand in 1977. The discovery resulted in immense commotion and a plesiosaur craze in Japan, and the shipping company ordered all its boats to try to relocate the dumped corpse again, but with no apparent success. Although some insisted it was not a fish, whale, or any other mammal, analysis later indicated it was almost certainly the carcass of a basking shark by comparing the number of sets of amino acids in the muscle tissue. Decomposing basking shark carcasses lose most of the lower head area and the dorsal and caudal fins first, making them resemble a plesiosaur. According to the crew, the creature had a one and a half meter long neck, for large, reddish fins and a tail about two meters long. No internal organs remained, but flesh and fat were somewhat intact. Montan's gazaka is an animal said to have been seen on Papua New Guinea in the early 20th century. It is said to resemble a taper or a giant sloth, having a long, proboscis-like snout, and some theories suggest it may be the descendant of an extinct marsupial belonging to the family Palacestidae. Totally separate from that creature is the real gazaka, which was the creation of the English comic actor, George Graves. A contemporary magazine described it thus, according to Mr. Graves. The gazaka was first discovered by an explorer who was accompanied in his travels by a case of whiskey, and who half thought that he had seen it before in a sort of dream. Graves's idea became a fad of the season, and George Edwards mounted a competition to encourage artists to give sketches of what the beast might look like. In the telling of the creation story, Tidalic awoke one morning with an unquenchable thirst, and began to drink until all the fresh water was greedily consumed. Creatures and plant life everywhere began to die due to lack of moisture. Other animals conspired against Tidalic and devised a plan for him to release all of the water he had consumed. This was successfully coordinated by a wise old owl, when Nabunum the eel made Tidalic laugh when he tied himself in comical shapes. As Tidalic laughed, the water rushed out of him to replenish the lakes, swamps and rivers. The story has been said to describe the water-holding frog, from central Australia. The frogs burrow underground during dry periods, and emerge during the rain to absorb large amounts of water, breed and feed. This allows it to avoid desiccation during drought, a trait not exhibited by most frogs. They were used by indigenous Australians during times of drought as a source of water.